Welcome to your 2021 video horoscopes with me, Lada from Astrolada. Thank you so much for choosing me to be astrologer for you for the year 2021. And what can I say? Just a quick summary. I'm delighted to say that 2021 will be way easier than 2020. You remember 2020, if you saw the recorded the, the videos that I created for 2020, I warned everyone this will be one of the toughest year ahead. For 2021, the action is moving from the cardinal signs like Aries, Capricorn, Cancer, and Libra, who had it the hardest, whether it was their ascendant sun or moon in 2020, it's moving to the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, and Scorpio. And when I say action, it means they'll have life-changing events. They'll have something that takes them to the next level. But passing from one level to the other is always a bit more difficult. <laughs> Especially fixed signs, they don't like changes so much. But again, it will be, again, I promise 2020, 2021 will be way easier generally for the world and every each one of us. Just a few people will be... <clears throat> A little bit more tested and 2021 is when a new age for humanity starts generally speaking this is when saturn and jupiter start their new cycle for the first time in almost 800 years in an air sign i mean they kick start this 200 year period they met in the 80s in an air sign but the last time they met in aquarius was 1226 something like that 800 years ago <laughs> so we'll start a brand new life brand new era for humanity you can check out my video which is for free on youtube um, about the year 2021 for the whole world there is new hope aquarius uh, energies coming in there is a new hope for humanity new future life will start splitting into uh, society will start splitting into not in a bad way, but in a way that instead of fighting and not seeing eye to eye, it will separate somehow. There will be people that want to live alternatively and people that want to follow the normal rules. But anyway, let's get back to you because those horoscopes are specific for you. Uh, so let me tell you what you need for those horoscopes in order to work for you. You need to find out your sun, moon, and ascendant signs. I want you to check all, all three of them. If you don't, if you can't afford to buy all three, just listen to your ascendant sign at least. But you need to know your time of birth to listen to the ascendant sign. And you need to know the degree as well. And if you have time to watch all three videos, the ascendant sun and moon, then listen to the specific degrees when I speak about the moon and the sun especially. For the ascendant, pay attention to everything, the houses, whatever. For the sun and moon, uh, especially pay attention if I mention your specific day of birth, if it's the sun or the degree of the moon as well. The houses can also be relevant. Who will be affected most? Everyone feels affected by the ascendant sign, but you need to be very correct with your time of birth. Like if your mom told you between two and three o'clock, no, it's like you need 234 you know, for example, PM. Uh, and within two, three minutes at least to have your correct time or five at most. So listen to your ascendant sign and the degree, start with it. Then listen to your sun sign. And of course, with the sun sign, you just know which day you're born, but you can check the degree as well. Listen to your moon sign. If you're born during the day, which means before the sunset, while the sun was above the horizon, the sun sign is very important for you because the sun becomes your ruling light. If you're born at night, like I am, when the sun has set, you know, you have to find out what day the sun set on the day you are born and rose. So, you know, you know, when you know your time of birth, you know, whether it was day or night. So if you're born at night, the moon, it will be very important for you because the moon becomes your queen, the light. So, uh, but I would advise, listen to three of those, ascendant, sun and moon. Uh, if you're a woman, the moon sign is usually very important. If you're a man, the sun sign is usually very important. If you're a woman in a competitive career or who has her own business or who is very much into her career, the sun sign becomes very important because the sun sign is our goals, is our masculine side, taking decisions. 
Let me say, tell you what the difference, the subtle difference is between listening to your ascendant sun and moon is. With your ascendant, it is the physical body and your fated events. They're kind of pre-recorded for you. Uh, you really see the ascendant sign in uh, when you, if, it's, if you have your correct time of birth, you would see it as uh, basically uh, as events that materialize, that are happen around you. And they've been already, usually they're like preset somehow. They're, they're set in stone. The ascendant is the most material aspect of the whole horoscope. Uh, it's kind of like our path, our destiny, whatever you want to say, the destiny of the soul. It's a little bit, we still have free will to some extent, but the ascendant is one of the most set ones. So you'd see very material manifestations uh, with the ascendant sign. With the moon sign, the moon is the soul and the feelings. So a lot of women, because women are more connected with their feelings, tend to actually resonate a lot with their moon sign. And they're like, yes, those things for the ascendant sign are happening, but what really, where my whole heart is and where my whole attention has been and where my whole excitement has been and, and my focus or pain or sadness, whatever, has been as per the moon sign prediction. So do check it out. Well, the sun sign is, and the moon sign is, again, the moon is connected to the past, so it's a little bit more karmic. It's something that has been, maybe program for the soul before our birth type of thing. While the sun sign is the spirit, which where we have the most free will. And with the sun sign, people often resonate when they listen to their sun sign. They say, wow, it's all correct. Especially people, the more self-sufficient and independent you are, the more self, um, and how do I say, the more, uh, it's the sun is where we have the will, free will power. Uh, and this is where we can influence the sun sign prediction, the events the most. And this is what usually our goals, our dreams are about. The sun is like this ideal of the spirit where you want to reach something that feeds your spirit, so to speak. So that's why a lot of people, especially in the West or in more, you know, where people have more free will generally in countries like that to determine uh, their life, to determine that direction in life. Because you know, there are a lot of countries you cannot still do that. <laughs> Some countries are still set like a thousand years back, you know, in mentality. But where there is more free will, usually in the more developed countries, uh, <clears throat> or, you know, uh, and then the sun uh, is very powerful. People can feel the sun very powerful, especially people that, as I said, men feel the sun very strongly. Women who have their own goals, who have freedom to go after career and things like that. Uh, to create their own careers, and especially if you have a stellium of planets in the same sign as your sun. For example, I'm Aries sun, but I also have the Venus, Mercury, Mars. So then I would feel the prediction from the sun sign very, you know, very strongly. Maybe not as strongly as the ascendant, but it will be up there. Uh, and with the sun sign prediction, we have the most ability, when you listen to it, to take the higher road, to use our free will to change things to the best manifestation possible. With the ascendant, with the moon, well, with the moon, if you can control your feelings, but it's harder to control your feelings. With the sun sign, if you can control your thoughts, it's easier to control your thoughts than your feelings. With the ascendant sign, it's kind of more like set. So I told you this, how do you find out what your sun, moon, and ascendant signs are? Uh, you can, let me share your screen with my screen with you you can go to my website astrolada.com you can find any other you know astrolada.com here it is you can find any other astrology website but i have this free birth chart calculator you can go there you can enter your details your name whatever it is your birth time let's say you're born okay maybe you're not eight years old but the minute you don't need the second very few people know the second your town i'll say new york continued so it's easier and here from the drop down menu you find out which new york it is let's say they might be new york in texas henderson okay let's say i was born there and this is what you get it might look like uh, alien <laughs> alien stuff to you but all you need to do is go here, planetary details. And I want you to take those first three, ascendant, sun, and moon. You see those three? 
and write the degree and the sign. So this person that I invented has the ascendant in Taurus at 24 degrees. Don't look at the second number, the second row. These are the seconds. So just round it up, 24 degrees Taurus. The sun is at 16 Aries. Usually everyone knows their sun sign. This is the, the sun sign is the same, you know, uh, every year at the same time. And this, the, moon per, the moon sign of this person is Libra at 8 degrees. Write those down. And if you hear when you're watching Libra, for example, we mentioned Libras born uh, with sun, moon, or ascendant from 3 to 9 degrees, they would feel this influence very strongly. Well, 8 degrees is within that influence. So pay attention what I'm talking about. You're going to feel, especially when I give specific degrees or days, if you're using for the moon, it will be a degree. And you hear your degree or that it's within the range, pay attention to that. You're going to feel this big time. The same with the sun sign, but with the sun sign, I also give the day you are born. For example, people that have degree at 16 areas, they're born around the 4th or 5th of April. You know, every year is the same. The ascendant, I'll give the degrees again. So if I say if you're born Taurus, if you, for Tauruses, um, who have uh, anything in degrees from, say, 12 to 26, and this person has a 24 degrees in Taurus, you will feel this influence, and so on, and so on. If you don't see, feel, hear your degree, just listen, start with the ascendant sign. The whole prediction for the ascendant sign will, you know, the houses. Then go through the sun sign if you're born during the day, the moon sign second or a second if you're born at night, especially if you're a woman, and end with one of the three and listen to the three of them and see which one you resonate the most with. See which one makes the most sense for you. Watch it again in the middle of the year, towards the end of the year, and you will figure out which planet actually is very strong, but always the ascendant is so important, guys, if you know your time of birth. And because, anyway, I cannot fully give you... Um, I cannot give you specific reading. Uh, I just look at the whole sign, you know, the whole Taurus I'm going to be speaking or the whole Gemini. But there is a way for you to be following daily your personal transits like no one else in the world has them. It's again on the website, personal transit calendar. You go there, you register. I already have an account. 40, 50,000 people are using it, I think, already uh, for free. It's weekly, it's for free, but no one else, no one, nowhere else in the world are you going to, and I show you how to use it here. There is an instructional video how to use the transits, but here you put your details, you can put as many people as you want, you're going to get free for them, or you can buy, you know, I, uh, you can buy for a, a year transits or for a month transits. A lot of the people that are subscribed, uh, subscribe for a month at a time. And you can just watch with your specific transits here. They come out. No one else in the world will have the same transits as you on the same time. Unless you have a twin born at the same place at the same time at the same minute as you. Otherwise, those transits will always be different. And you can go through each day of the year and see which transits you have. And you click and you read and that will you know, you don't need my videos. But in those videos, what I strive to do, because a person has so many transits throughout the year. Look at that. This is just for one month. So many transits. How do you make sense of them? In those yearly videos, this is what I help you do, especially if you watch them from for your ascendant. You know, to a lesser degree, sun and moon, but they're still relevant. And I give you the bigger, fuller picture, like a, like a, uh, instead of like separate, you know, you have like, for example, look how many transits I'm currently having this day today, <laughs> and, you know, so, oh, which one, you know, but I give you like a summary of it, like wrap it up. All right. Uh, there you go. I think we're ready. If you have written your sun, moon or ascendant, let's dive in. But before that, just a little quick prayer for God and uh, to bless the year 2021 and to protect anyone. So, Dear Father, Mother, Creators, dear Jesus, dear Mary, oh Buddha, uh, Allah, whoever, 
whoever has the higher power from whatever place they're praying in the world, turn towards your higher power, to the angels, to the exalted beings that are taking care of humanity, that are, helpless, that are selflessly helping us every day, our guardian angels, our departed beloved ones. Thank you so much for protecting us, for keeping us sane during the year 2020, for raising our consciousness collectively during that year. And I ask you for this new age that starts from the year 2021, from this, this brave new world. Let it be tilted towards the positive. Let the balance go towards the positive. Let more and more souls wake up to the divine love, to brotherhood, to peace. We are entering the age of Aquarius full speed from the beginning of 2021. May God, your desire and your plan for the world be fulfilled through each one of us may brotherhood love equality fraternity come compassion between each other rather than separation and let everyone who is watching this video find out the most important information for them reach their heart reach their soul let them connect with the information that is most relevant for them and let them be prepared and help them through the path and help me be a good channel and a good good channeler of your wisdom of your knowledge so i can connect the people with the right with the right inspiration amen all right let's start Rising Sun or Moon 2021. Leo, the last couple of years, almost three years, Saturn has been passing through your sixth house. So especially 2020, Jupiter also went there. Saturn was there. Pluto was there. So a lot of the last period of your life, the last one, two years, have been a lot about the sixth house issues, which is a bit of a difficult house. In astrology, the sixth house is known as one of the challenging houses. So if this is Leo, if that's you, this is where planets were. Uh, oops, sorry. If this is you, one, two, three, four, five, six. All planets are basically the important planets that determine uh, the visible manifestations in your life or in the sixth house. And let's make a quick recapitulation what it meant for you. Till the end of 2020, there was a lot of focus on duties, responsibility. It might have felt like a heavy energy. The sixth house is so different than your natural energy because Leo is born to be center stage, to live the big life, the grand life, to uh, inspire others, to be full of joy. You know, it's one of the really good karmas being born like a Leo, whether it's your rising sun or moon. And the sixth house from Leo, it's very, it's always antagonistic. The sixth house is what is antagonistic to a sign. It's something like there is no connection there. There is no aspect, whatever. The sixth house that was activated for it has the energy of the servant of having to cope with material duties, with responsibilities, with the daily grind of routine. And it really took the glamour away from Leo's life. Uh, I know so many Leo rising people that just felt just like, Bleh. it was on and on and duties and responsibilities. And Leo son people possibly also felt it. My mom and dad are both Leo son. It's just been a grind for them, especially the last year, 2020. And, 20, and 2019, it's just six houses, the servant, duties, responsibilities, uh, uh, running errands, you know. <laughs> there is nothing royal and kingly about that. But it is what it is. This is what you had to cope and deal with. Everyone has to learn to manage different areas of our lives. And that's what you did for the last two years. But I have good news for you. All this daily grind is going to slow down. A lot of you had increased work responsibilities or blockages with work. Or uh, it's either too much or there, is some, there was some complication there. But uh, hopefully what you did is like you really did the work of 
you know, uh, six houses like the apprentice, you prepared behind the scenes, you did the dirty work that have to be done. Because from this year onwards, 2021, the planets Jupiter and Saturn that determine one's social and political state, one social economic, sorry, not political, one, one, so, one economic state, one visibility in society. For the past 14 years, they've been transiting, well, at least Saturn, because it's very important, it's been transiting below the horizon in this invisible part. You see, if this is your sign and this is the horizon, you know, Saturn for 14 years has been going underground for you, below. And from 2021, 22, it comes at this zone where it's horizontal and starts moving upwards from then on. So it's almost like you were prepared like a servant or a student, the sixth house is the disciple, is the apprentice, that you were tested. Are you committed? How hard can you work? How well can you take care of material uh, problems? Fix problems, six houses to fix problems as well. A very material uh, um, nature. And uh, fix your health, six houses as well. That a lot of you had to deal with health issues uh, that became quite intense for you that uh, you could not anymore ignore. And you had a unique opportunity when Saturn and Jupiter were in your sixth house for the past one, two years to basically improve your health habits. A lot of you that I know as Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising people quit an unhealthy habit, for example. I did that. Oh my God, I struggled for so many years um, with smoking, with drinking. I wasn't out there, but like in Europe, everyone does it socially and uh, it was becoming a escape. I'm a Leo, right? A real Leo moon. And in the past two years, while well, Saturn was transiting my sixth house from the moon, it was like, I have to do this, but it was just so hard. I was trying over and over, whatever Saturn transits, you just try over and fall back and you try again and you try again and you have to, you do it and at the end it happened, thank you God. So you had a rare opportunity that will not come for many years ahead to get rid of unhealthy habits, to fix something with your health, to, you know, for some it might be something as simple as, uh, Fixing that you fixed your routine to wake up early, to make up your bed, to be more organized and clean. Six house, the house of the cleaner and order. And a lot of, I notice a lot of Leo's that normally, normally are not kind of obsessed with order and organization in the past one, two years. And I see it from me as well. Things like disorder and chaos started bugging them because you are cultivating with Saturn and Jupiter those Virgo six house qualities. The sixth house is Virgo in nature, you know, and that's what it was for you. Purity, cleanliness, uh, order, taking care of your health, your nutrition, maybe some exercise. Some of you started eliminating bad habits. A lot of you had to, to deal with health issues. And now when Saturn and Jupiter leave your sixth house, it's going to be resolved. It's going to, those health issues are going to leave you behind. So there is good news for that because from the beginning of 2021, there is nothing. Just Pluto is still a bit in your sixth house. Fully it comes out in 2025, I think. But, you know, the really heavy planets, Saturn and Jupiter, the visible ones are coming out of there. So you're not going to be told whatever you've done for your health, for maintaining your body, for maintaining your environment, uh, for your work, preparatory work, working like a slave, <laughs> like basically doing the dirty work, preparatory work. Now you're going to start bringing it out to the public. And those issues have gone behind. You leave them. And when Jupiter and Saturn enter your seventh house, it's a public house of your audience of visibility. Whatever you've been preparing here, you're ready to display it to others, either to be admired or whatever to be, you know. Um, but it, it's, you're starting to come out. And for 14 years, starting from 21, 22, you have Saturn passing this upper part of your horoscope of visibility. And from 2022, both planets of social importance, your role in society, Jupiter and Saturn, will start coming above the horizon for you, especially Leo rising people will feel it very strongly. Not so much, okay, maybe sun, but okay, sun and moon to 25%, but you'll notice that, that they're starting to come out in the visibility that you're starting to take a way more impo socially important role for last. For now, you are working on internal things for years. Uh, you are working on 
your own personal world, so to speak. And now you're ready for the next 14 years with Saturn passing the upper part of your horoscope to unfold, give those gifts to be seen, to be recognized, to reach a peak and then, you know, uh, recognition and so on. This journey begins now. It's not going to happen in one year, all of this, but you're going to start feeling that you're more in the public eye, that you're bringing things out there, uh, that you're more visible more and more. Ne definitely, no. Till now you were this, you know, working in the masters, uh, talking metaphorically like uh, this disciple, this um, apprentice that is being prepared for this, for the grand work you're going to do after that. So yes, those six house issues, and if you've caught whatever you fix in your daily environment, uh, health, it's it's just going behind health issues. Uh, some of you worked on debt and resources and financial matters, because six house is one of those houses as well. Uh, well, it is coming out, and the kind of it's it's less and less about subservient roles and less and less about service, but more and more your focus will be going towards relationships. And not only that, Jupiter and Saturn, at the very end of 2020, are making a conjunction at the zero, the very start of your seventh house in Aquarius. And they determine, this conjunction determines the next 20 years. Your role, everyone's role, social, economical role in the next 30, 20 years, sorry, Saturn and Jupiter have a 20-year cycle. In 20 years, they'll meet again. Next time, they'll meet in your 11th house. In 40 years, they'll meet in your uh, second house and so on for 200 years ahead. <laughs> so it's starting a new age, new era. For the past 200 years, 250 years, Saturn and Jupiter are meeting always in earth signs. So for everyone, it's starting totally new chapter in human history, so to speak. And uh, what role you're going to play for the next 20 years is determined by this conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. And I'll look at it from your ascendant. Make sure if your ascendant is not Leo, but you're Leo Sun, check out your ascendant video to know specifically the more uh, the more exact location, what your role you're going to be playing for the world. But anyone who has Leo Sun Moon arising will have some important role connected that you're going to enter into that role gradually from 2021. It might take 10 years to unfold, but it's, it's going to be something that you create that you use for many years after that in, in your role in society. And that role will be connected to other people. So some important people will enter your life from 2021. Uh, some of them might be new people in the face of Jupiter. Jupiter brings new opportunities. Some of them will be people from the past even that you reckoning or that you know already, which is often what Saturn indicates. And that process will continue not only 2021, but 2022, very intense as well, while Saturn is still in your seventh house. But especially 2021, the people that enter your life, and you will create certain partnerships with them. That will be very important. That can define, it might be friendships we're talking here about, one-on-one. -on -one. It might be a client that enters your life. It might be a business partner, someone that you collaborate with, someone that you join intelligence with or skills with. Or it might be a personal partner, especially for Leo rising and moon people. It might be a person, because moon is emotional connections, you know, uh, but for Leo, someone will appear in your life or more than one person. And it might be even personal relationship for some of you, someone that plays a long term influence in your life. I cannot promise you if they stay forever in your life or for 20 years, the cycle of Saturn and Jupiter, there is a likelihood because whatever starts with Saturn and Jupiter, at least half of its cycle, it stays in your life like 10 years. But uh, even if it's not someone who stays, you know, so long, Whoever appears in your life now, they can initiate something with you or trigger something in you. Some excitement, some new path, some new horizon, some new interest, some new opportunity, some new knowledge, some new perspective that they give you, uh, even in a way that they might force you into it through Saturn, you know, because Saturn can be demanding, can be more stressful. But such another person will be like, for you, like a engine, like a stimulus, like um, uh, the reason that you 
take some really important decision in your life, that you start some really important path in your life, that you initiate something. And I would say, I would strongly advise you if someone, if, if you want to do something of importance, uh, especially if you're a Leo rising, especially uh, even with the sun and the moon to some extent, in 2021, collaborate with someone. Join hands with someone. Don't try to do it alone. I know it's very hard for Leo's because Leo's always, Leo is number one. Leo is, is, wants to be all for everything and for everyone and to do it all, you know, one man band. But this time you have to, you know, go against a little bit against this internal nature. You have, you the gain, be, this is naturally you being the king and stuff. But now ask for support and help or Ask for specialists. Um, whatever important thing you have to do for 2021, take like an advisor or someone who is more experienced. Saturn represents people that have more experience, expertise, um, that um, have authority in something. You know, even if they uh, sound boring and they have too many rules or it's like they're doing it like in old-fashioned way or whatever, but... Jupiter makes sure that, you know, uh, that, that it will be something beneficial will come out of it. So take an advisor or take uh, a partner with someone. Some really important people can come in your life that you partner that help you reach your pinnacle. Immediately, for some of you, it might happen. For some of you, it might take a few years. But those connections that you make right now and those partnerships, they are the answer to your social influence and growth and unfoldment of a potential for years ahead. You know, so it's, I, I think very pivotal year and you are not doing it on your own. Again, reach out, take, get out of your cocoon <laughs> uh, and start presenting it to others. And even when you're trying to make a decision about something, instead of just taking it fully autonomously, which again, you'll say, but that's, you have to be independent. No, now specifically that year, make a poll on Facebook or social media, ask someone. If you have a counselor, speak with them on one-to-one, -one. very close friend, ask them for an advice. Brainstorm, or not maybe with many people, one-on-one. -on -one. Share your idea and think what others, you know, think about it. This is the seventh house. Use others as a mirror so they can reflect back your thoughts and they'll give you some constructive criticism, which is what Saturn tends to do. Don't get to, you know, because I know Leo's in particular, then don't like to be told what to do. They know they know best. <laughs> you know, I've grown up with two Leos, mother and father. So <laughs> I know that and I'm Leo Moon. So, <laughs> but this time, maybe that's your biggest challenge this year with the Saturn opposition to your sign. You know, especially those Leos that are born from 6 degrees to 14 degrees Leo. Uh, uh, because Saturn will pass three times over those degrees, 6 to 14. This means that 6 to 14 Sun, Moon, or Rising, they'll feel the Saturn influence the strongest. This opposition, uh, almost like resistance to uh, that you're having towards someone, authority figure, an older figure, or someone who is... Uh, more demanding or trying to uh, teach you how to do things the right way. You know, this is Saturn always the right way. And, you know, and you might feel like, oh, no, 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 no. It's, but you have to incorporate that energy. Saturn is extremely strong, is more powerful. You better ingratiate Saturn and go with its energy and try to take advice from authority figures. So maybe even a partner will be, too will be more demanding on you. A partner will put certain conditions on you. If you're especially those degrees, the later born Leos, don't worry. Actually, the Leos from zero to six degrees, they'll feel it as well, but uh, zero to six degrees, but just once. And those, that will be the first three months of the year. The first three months approximately, January, February, March. And after that, Saturn, let me just see exactly when, I can't see <laughs> exactly when Saturn enters the... Uh, sorry, from six degrees onwards. Yeah, I think the first three months. So I would say Leo's born from zero to 14 degrees. Okay, let's say that way. Uh, 
they will feel the Saturn influence the strongest. While another batch of Leos I'll talk in a little bit, they'll feel the Jupiter influence stronger this year. But um, so the earlier born Leos, say zero to 14 degrees, that would be from the 23rd of July uh, or 24th of July towards the 8th of August, they're under the Saturn influence. So it feels a bit more demanding on them. Especially they can feel pressure from others. A partner, one way it can play out is that the partner might be very busy. They can feel a bit more distance in the relationship because the partner has too many responsibilities and duties. Um, because Saturn is work, responsibilities, you know, all such things. And they can create some coldness or distance. So drain the joy a little bit out of relationships especially relationships that are uh, intimacy to have fun with uh, your marriage partner it becomes more about responsibility but it can also mean that this year you take on more responsibilities with your partner in some way you can uh, for some it might mean parenthood extra responsibilities or duties for some it might mean some goal or mutual plan that you decide to do with your partner that does not allow much time for lovey-dovey and relaxing and having fun. It has to mobilize your energy in a serious way to combine your resources, uh, like to combine your efforts together, so to speak. And that's good, especially business partnerships work really well when Saturn transits the seventh house, especially, as I said, for those of you born, you know, from zero to 14 degrees Leo, or especially 6 to 14 degrees where Saturn passes three times in 2021, which means you're born from around um, the 28th of June to around the 7th, 8th of August, 28th of June, July, no, sorry, 28th of July to around the 7th, 8th of August. You feel Saturn influence so strong, everything I'm talking about. You feel it, Every, all other Leos feel it, but not as intensely. Like the ones, the degrees that I said, and days from 6 to 14, it's like you're in the center of the spider's web in connection to uh, Saturn transit opposition. While the, the later degrees of Leo, they're kind of at the outskirts of the spider's web. And if, if, if like a bee goes in or a fly, those in the center feel it the most. Those, are, you know, those at the ends kind of, they have some reverberations. Just a little bit, they start feeling it. So... The seventh house Saturn indicates elderly people might be around you. Let me give you an example. My mom just had Saturn opposition her son. She's zero degree Leo, which happened for her the year 2020 already. And the whole 2020 Saturn opposition her moon has been quite tough on her. She was feeling a bit down emotionally, psychologically drained because the sun is your vitality, is your joy in life, is your... Um, freedom and goals and she felt she was blocked a little bit in those because she had to take care of her mother elderly people is saturn some nurturing caring responsibilities because her son in her natal chart is in the fourth house so she's leo but her ascendant is taurus and the son is in the fourth house of the mom and caring so she's been like basically changing her diapers five times a day, changing her sheets three times a day, feeding her, taking, it's like watching a baby, but an elderly person. So that's how her Saturn opposition, Sun in Leo played out for her. And I'm not saying for all your other Leos it will play out, but there is demands on you and you have to, especially the ones that are feeling Saturn the strongest, you have to uh, accept certain restrictions or demands or impositions or extra responsibilities on behalf of another you have to on behalf of um, because of external circumstances you have to take into consideration others it's it's you won't be able to do what you want freely on your own mind um, you have to it comes with condition that is connected to another person which is, I mean, I'm not saying it's horrible or anything like that. It, it just might feel like there is certain opposition that you have to overcome, certain blockage, the, the 60 or 14 degrees uh, Leos that I was talking about, you know, they would feel it. Or uh, let's say zero, 1 to 14 degrees. Uh, but at the same time, it can be great to create financial uh, business connections, business networks of any sort to... Uh, to connect to clients uh, or business partnerships because Saturn is about work, responsibilities, you know, uh, and Saturn rules your sixth house as well. And on another level, 
It also means that Saturn for the next two years for you, Leo, all Leos, you know, is going to be structuring your relationships. You need to mature when it comes to your relationships. And now you're going to look around from 2021 and you're going to start saying, is this person worth my time? Saturn is the planet of time and you become very aware of time, of uh, matters regarding time in the area of life. It's transiting. So you're going to be like, should I be wasting my time with those clients, for example, or with this very close friend? Or should I be wasting my time with this partner? Uh, or should I be wasting my time with dealing with such matters with this person? So some of you, especially those 0 to 14 degrees, might decide to, to really chop off the dead wood connected to who is in your life and to remove certain people from your life. Uh, some of you, if you're not doing it, it might happen from outside that you, uh, that they, certain people from your life, they leave, you know, especially important one-on-one -on -one people. Uh, so it's either you take the decision and it's not for everyone that they're going to separate, but it's basically you just decide to streamline your relationships, to make them more effective, to make them more productive. And you're going to cut off people that, um, wasting your time that are not bringing anything constructive from it you can even become more demanding in your partner you can even start putting your you know because seventh house is how you treat others but how others treat you as well either your partner can start putting demands on you and you know ultimatums or you better fix that or you know try harder or whatever or you can start putting that you can feel dissatisfaction and thinking okay my partner is too lazy or my partner is you know, they're not taking enough responsibility. So you start demanding that from that from them. You're going to see that you become a bit more critical towards your partners, that you demand a bit more, more mature behavior there, the ones that are strongly influenced by the Saturn, you know. And uh, you're going to notice that you expect more accountability from others, but others expect more accountability from you as well. And a partner can hold you accountable for your progress, for your career. Let me give you an example. I remember when Saturn was transiting opposite my sun sign. Uh, and um, when it was transiting opposite my ascendant. Oh, let's start with when it was transiting opposite my ascendant. So if you're a Leo ascendant, you know... Uh, for me, when it happened, it was 14 years ago because I'm aqua ascendant and I was between two relationships. I kept going back and forth, back and forth. And when Saturn entered my seventh house for two years, I had to decide who I want to be with and had to make a grow up at the end, you know, like not just jump between two relationships in two different countries. And at the end, I just quit both of them and I started a third totally different relationship. So you're taking some important decisions. You cannot a longer sweep problems in regards to relationships under the carpet. They culminate, they intensify, and you have to take like a very reasonable, rational, practical decision who to be in your life. And I remember I took my decision on a very practical reason. So I was like, one person is not... They do not have the economic stability in their life that I would like. Uh, they never have a job. Like I, I might have feelings for them, but that's not going to cut it. The other person, there was too much of an age gap. So it's kind of like it's, you, you take rational decisions about relationships. When Saturn transits the seventh house or opposite, you know, your ascendant or your moon as well. And it's you have to take also... Uh, if you're in already in a relationship, as I said, there can be some distancing that happens or a partner is too busy or taking on some responsibility with a partner as well or some changing demands, you know, uh, or your partner is starting some new phase of their life. Saturn is like they're building new beginning in their life and that can reflect on you. That can, you know, that can put a little bit, not strain, but... Um, you might be there to support your partner and be very happy for this new beginning, but it's hard work on their part. So you might be feeling this as well. Uh, it can be a very positive manifestation, but just be aware. This is my husband just passed through Saturn opposition, his sun sign, and I was just working like crazy. <laughs> and also it can mean that you can attract elder partners. If you're single, for example, now 
You can attract someone of Saturnian nature, maybe some Aquarian person, some Capricorn person, or someone with Capricorn rising on moon, or Aquarius moon arising, or you can attract someone that is older than you or have age difference, five to seven or more years. Such relationships are very typical. And I remember when Saturn was transiting my seventh house, the three relationships that I was talking about, they were all eight or more years. One was 24 years older than me, one was 14, one was eight. So they were all Saturnian in nature. Um, uh, and especially the early part of uh, Leo's, they would feel this energy. It doesn't mean you'll be without any relationship. It blocks it, you know, or anything. <laughs> it's... Um, it, it, it can slow things down a little bit. Starting new relationships might take a bit longer, but because you really are serious when Saturn transits the seventh house that you want serious committed relationship, you don't want to let anyone just for fun and frivolous things in. Uh, you just want, you know, the people that are reliable, accountable. And this is when... If you are someone who lets in, you know, randomly people when Saturn enters the seventh house for two years for you, almost two and a half years from now, 21, 22 and part of 23, this is the time when you really prioritize and change your priorities. And, and who am I letting close to me? Who is worthy? You know, who am I wasting my time? And also you, you might kind of almost build walls a little bit, but for the walls for those that are there as takers only, who are not contributing anything constructive for you, you know, so, that, and that, unfortunately, it can mean that for some of you, they can be, they appear as such people that demand too much, or they want to take too much, or they have, like, you have, might have, like, a karmic debt toward, you know, they, you're giving them a finger, and they want to take a hand, but that's only so they can push you, so you learn how to, um, be reasonable, which is another word for Saturn. Be reasonable, be practical, and be uh, realistic with who you give your energy away to, who you share your time with, who you partner with, you know, uh, and, and such. So often it's a big period. It's a very important, especially when Saturn goes retrograde, which it goes retrograde for a little bit. Let me see when. Uh, May 23rd to October the 10th, you're going to feel this quite strong. Uh, where you reevaluate your relationships and some business partnership you might decide to leave behind while you, you might like to renegotiate other business partnership or collaborations. Uh, you're going to just, and at the end of this process, at the end of this year, you know, maybe 2022 for some of you, the later born Leos, you, the people that stay in your life, the clients, the relationships that you build, they're rock solid. You might even, uh, especially the early part, Leo's, the first batch, 0 to 14 degrees, you might even downsize a little bit on your relationships or clientele, one-to-one -one exchanges with others. But you're going to leave very quality people because Saturn is a master of quality, not quantity. Downsize it a little bit. But because it's fantastic in Aquarius, in Aquarius it's it's the it's the, where Saturn is happiest and gives the best results. So it's gonna give you the best quality clients, and you it's kind of like time maybe to, especially when it's retrograde, to pay attention to your old clients or to the one that really deserve your attention, or to the audience that really deserves your attention, uh, and uh, to. Um, and it, it, it's not connected to how much you make or finances or whatever. It's consolidating this base of uh, sales. The seventh house is sales and uh, reaching your audience and your clients as well. So for business, I think it, it will be quite good. I think there is some kind of restructuring there of marketing strategy that can happen for some of you who you reach out. Plus Jupiter. The whole year Jupiter is in your seventh house, so it will bring new clients as well. And you can just, you can decide like, I'm done with those clients that are just, you know, some clients might just take and not give back, for example, or they, they can be too much hard work and time wasters. So you decide like, oh, I'll focus on a smaller batch of people, but new ones will come, Jupiter. That's when it's concerning business, when it's concerning personal relationships. Uh... Uh, we, as we were talking with Saturn, I said a lot of things how it can play out. Another thing is you can work on some mutual goal because Aquarius is mutual goals in the seventh house. 
uh, with a partner uh, that can be a little bit, you know, it can take out a little bit the spontaneous fun of the relationship, but it can really give you a lot of enthusiasm for this mutual goal that you're working to do something of lasting value, to do something of uh, uh, like a legacy that you leave with your relationship, spouse or partner, you know. And uh, the other part, there is another part that will st most strongly feel Jupiter. Every Leo will feel Jupiter in the seventh house this year. But the earlier born Leos from um, 6 to 22 degrees almost, they feel Leo just once. Leo, sorry, Jupiter passage just once. It means there will be an expansion. There will be something good that comes to you through another, through collaboration. Some of you can meet partner. You know, there is a saying in ancient astrology, when Saturn and Leo, when Saturn and Jupiter are in the same sign, they manifest the, the sign. So I think a lot of single Leos will no longer be single after this year. Single, especially single Leo rising or moon people. Uh, because Saturn and Jupiter will manifest their seventh house. Jupiter brings the opportunity. Saturn materializes it, makes it, crystallizes it for it to happen, you know, um, and to work on it. So not only does the opportunity come, but you're serious about it. Jupiter is opportunity. Saturn is I'm serious about it. If there, and there will be certain obstacles possibly with Saturn. But you're like, despite of it, I'm going to work hard on it. If this person is worth it. And you have a very good, uh, no bullshit um, uh, barometer with you about relationships when Saturn enters the seventh house. And Jupiter gives you great intuition as well. Saturn is like, no nonsense, no bullshit. I'm not going to take your, you know, calling me once every four or five days or whatever bullshit. Um, or me doing all the house homework, housework, you know. It's like, no bullshit anymore. And you're kind of, I can cut you off. Uh, it's not the sentimental, oh, but I need them, whatever. Saturn is no nonsense. Let's get to business. Let's do, get this done. Or, you know, my way. Not my way or the highway, but let's find a compromise or the highway. And Jupiter at the same time, because it's there with Saturn, it's not going to make you just so, you know, and others so cruel to each other. Because sometimes when it's just Saturn, it's a bit, bit cruel. It's a bit lonely as well. It's a bit, it's a bit cold-hearted. But with Jupiter date also gives you goodness, so and intuition, so it will attract you to the right good people. It will bring right good people intuitively to you. You would feel like you know, oh, this person is worth it. Uh, while Saturn will make you have the practical approach towards it, you know, as well the no nonsense support approach. Let's do something serious or not do anything. And Jupiter will bring those opportunities, like good partners, personally or business-wide, or collaborators as well, of, of good sort type people, you know, that also have good things to give to you. Uh, Jupiter is the good karma, and uh, uh, so both, you know, good, good sort of people come to you that bring opportunity that expand your possibilities for you, that make you... Uh, that make you in uh sorry i just got distracted a little bit oh sorry forgive me <laughs> uh so yes jupiter brings the opportunity da -da -da -da, all right and and uh, the other batch of leos born from 22 degrees to the end of leo 30 degrees whether it's your sun moon or ascendant um they're feeling much stronger in 2020 Jupiter influence. They're basically mostly feeling Jupiter influence, almost all mostly Jupiter influence. Jupiter passes over those degrees from 22 Leo till 33 times. The earlier Leos also feel Jupiter in their seventh house, but it just passes once through there. And they feel it only in the first part of the year, while the other Leos, they feel it till the end of the year. And uh, 22 degrees to 30 degrees, Leo's, Leo's born with their son, those degrees from uh, is from August the 14th to August the 22nd, August 14th to August 22nd, um, and they're feeling mostly Jupiter, so what can happen, they, they are more likely to see expansion of their popularity, of their audience, much more about bringing new clients rather than 
deciding to downsize and, and to, to choose which are the best ones, you know, the most quality ones, like Saturn is doing for the early Leos. But Jupiter is like more, more wider audience or wider popular appeal or more sales if you're in sales or uh, the people that you attract will be more Jupiterian in nature, possibly foreigners, possibly more educated from a higher social standing, teachers of some sort, bohemian, party, uh, larger than life, wise people as well, but wise not in a Saturnian way, I, you know, you should know what to do, not you should type of person wise, but people that are like guru, like a benevolent teacher who gives you a higher perspective and they can very easily enter into relationships business partnerships um I, i'm those leos my moon is at 24 degrees so i catch the jupiter influence 2021 2022 i catch the saturn ones uh, you know the later leos they'll feel the saturn influence later but you know first i think the later leos first they kind of come 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 and then the culling and uh who is who should they leave like oh bring in more clients or more partnerships or let's expand my public um, influence seven houses connected to that let's expand my clientele let's expand my uh, network my sales let's expand my relationships uh, uh, collaborations and then they'll sort through those and decide who is worth to stay in 2021 22 but now it's like whoa and some amazing collaborations can come for you some amazing uh uh, uh, partners that can bring more opportunities and abundance for you, that can bring more wealth for you as well. So I would advise you collaborate with others. The earlier Leos, they would feel more forced into that. They would feel more like um, there is like uh, more criticized by another, but they would learn some very valuable lessons. The later Leos that I talked about, it will be like, whoa. <laughs> You know, it, it's going to come flowing easier. Um, and, uh, but generally, Leo's, you will play some really important role, collect some, uh, you know, uh, through a partnership that comes into your life that will contribute for you for many 10, 20 years ahead, like we said earlier. Or it can be, for some of you, is marriage time or taking a relationship to the next commitment level in 2021. For some of you, it's starting a brand new chapter in their relationship. Like, who, uh, you know, ending one and starting a new one because this conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, which change is, we call it the change of card every 20 years. So the change of card is happening in your seventh house. I think a lot of Leo's for the next 10, 20 years will have very important roles as consultants, as salespeople, as uh, with audience somehow, the seventh house. In matters connected to exchange of goods on one-to-one -one level or consulting or advising um, or motivating others on one-to-one -one level because of this Saturn-Jupiter conjunction falling in the seventh house. They might be in some roles of negotiation. You can play an important role in in positions of negotiation, of diplomacy over the next 20 years, 10, 20 years. And Seventh House is business. I think it's going to be fantastic time for Leos, who's always wanted to have their own business. And I know if anyone wants to have their own business, Leo, that's it. Because Leo is the king. They have the great creative in, in imagination. And they usually, especially Leo rising, as Leo sun people, but rising in moon as well they have those inclinations so if you want to have your own business this conjunction of saturn and jupiter in your seventh house is saying that especially the seventh house is business buying and selling exchange goods you give one thing you receive another that's the seventh house uh, so it's especially with the collaboration uh, with the help of specialists or something like that you can start this now this year is the ground zero ground zero <laughs> and if you start some business now it can take especially that puts you in the public eye it's a business that is like exchange with another person that um has an audience as well uh will, i think it will or sales of any sorts or consulting of any sorts uh 
I I think oh designing seven house you know there's this energy of liver of designing of beauty uh, it's the year please do it start from this it might take a couple of years to kick it off fully you know till Saturn moves out of the seventh house but now you're doing the groundwork and when it comes to personal relationships it's reckoning time if you've been in a marriage or relationship that is so so but like you know, maybe you are stuck in a little bit especially when Saturn transits the sixth house sixth house is dissolution of a relationship and Saturn stagnates that dissolution so some Leos might have found themselves in relationships that are not well balanced but it's stuck without being well balanced and when Saturn enters the seventh house now and Jupiter I think within a year there will be a, a you have to make the decision and decision will be made for you if in, in certain relationship that it can leave your life basically if this relationship was unbalanced if you are giving too much or not receiving too much saturn in the sixth house froze that situation for the last two years two three years that it's kind of fr freezing of an imbalanced situation but uh, the conflict is not resolved and there is no forward or backward movement in unequal relationships and there's, it freezes the dissolution of a partnership also, especially one that is not good. Uh, good relationships, they don't suffer that. But when Saturn moves in the seventh house with Jupiter, you cannot, it's, it's going to fall apart. If, or something will happen to, has to be readdressed, fixed, worked on. You know, it's not going to stay in that frozen state of imbalance anymore as it's been for two, three years possibly. Or Saturn transited the sixth house. There can be someone new that appears in the face of Jupiter because it activates it or even in Saturn, in the face of Saturn that makes you move from that unhealthy business or personal partnership or stagnant, uh, unbalanced. You know, I, even me, my marriage, I think is quite good, uh, but I have certain business partnerships that it's like it's one way street. I'm giving, I'm not receiving anything back, uh, but haven't done anything about it when Saturn was in the sixth kind of in frozen situation when it moves in the seventh like whoa clean out the old bring in the new or work on the old revive them Saturn can do that revive the old but make it much better more you know there's some movement at least either it goes away or you know and that's for personal or business collaboration or personal marriages long-term relationship boyfriend girlfriend so yeah there is forward movement and for good relationships i think you can achieve something there might be some testing trial times again uh that i talked about but you can achieve something great with your partner and uh, you can recommit with the further commitment or goal together all right i just want to warn a few of you those who are the degrees in particular from 7 to 14 degrees uh, 7 to 14 degrees Leo, so born from July 29th to August the 7th, Uranus will square from the 10th house those degrees three times in 2021. They would square. So if you're Leo, Sun, Moon, Horizon, 7 to 14 degrees, Uranus, and then Saturn, Uranus and Saturn will be squaring those, Saturn opposing, Uranus squaring your degrees. So what I can see, especially when the squares are happening and the squares are happening in February, in June and in December, I think yes, February, June and December, you have to be more cautious with your relationship. Uranus can actually bring like a sudden breakdown uh, of a situation that is unbearable in a relationship, a sudden breakdown of a partnership, so business relationship, uh, collaboration, and it might be very much connected to work as Uranus does it from the 10th house, but the 10th house is also social status, so it might be sudden breakdown of a marriage. Um, not sudden, it's something that's been building up, but it happens past, you know, or some disruption there, some challenge to your relationship because of career, because of an authority figure, because of a change of worldly responsibility. Uh, that is something puts pressure or stresses and your relationship or for example you might have because of work you have to be gone for some time so it puts pressure on your relationship that is on and off or something like that you know this these two themes career social status and worldly responsibilities and relationships intertwine those months especially for those degrees that i mentioned 
and they can be sudden changes for example a new contract seven house that a uh, look a new your career changes and you have to change your contracts at work or your relationships with clients and work suddenly to very adapt, to very fast adapt and this stresses you out or there is a change in the direction of your career you're in us in the 10th house so you have to change clients or you have to change your strategy for sales or reaching clients and communicating with clients the seventh house or uh changing the your career can affect your marriage or your marriage changes with your partner can uh, push towards some, you know, some change with your career. It can play both ways around those times. But I, I think even though there's a stressful aspect, I think the biggest and not only thing I've seen it astrologically, the biggest progress and the biggest changes that we made, they're always during hard aspects, squares, oppositions, and you, Leo's, especially those degrees that I mentioned, you have, you know, this rare opportunity to really shift something and to make huge strides because difficult aspects, they do not, if, if it's not, you know, if it's easy aspects, they don't push you for big changes and, and big risks. And, you know, if it's, uh, when it's difficult aspects, the circumstances, become so more stressful, suddenly change. Uh, and because of that, it pushes you to take bigger risks to make much bigger changes than you ever thought possible or wanted. And, you know, and you can have 10 times better results suddenly. And it's uncomfortable, it's happening. It can feel unstable, the uncertainty of where it's going, especially relationship, you know, seven house, commitments, um, and, and career, 10th house. But this is when you can make some of the biggest innovations, changes there with your clients, with your career, with your marriage relationship, something that can really take your relationship to the next level, you know, rather than some kind of a stalemate, stuck, semi-okay situation, you know. So I, I don't want you to be scared from difficult transit. Just remember when it happens, oh, don't lose it. You're like, okay. There is something better out there. This is what it's trying the universe to, to, to lead me towards, to show me, you know. <laughs> okay. So I think some of the biggest changes this year will be experienced by Leo, especially those middle degrees and a big renewal through other people, let other people in. I think uh, I'll speak about Uranus in particular a bit later, uh, but... Uh, big changes in career for some of you as well, in your social status, total brand new careers you can start. But let's go now a little bit to Rahu and Ketu. I think we mentioned everything about Saturn and Jupiter in the seventh house. Now let's go to Rahu and Ketu. They're passing in the Ketu and Rahu, they're always opposite each other. These are the nodes of the moon. And you'll see how they're activating again, especially Rahu is the one that's felt very strongly because this is where it ignites our passion. Rahu rules the reptilian desire brain. And wherever it goes, it stimulates our desire temporarily for a year and a half. So part of 2020 already this process started and it's activating your desire brain in this 11th house from Leo. So... What is 11th house? 11th house is social networking, connecting. It's again, other people. Wow, there is a theme in 2021. Can you hear it? One-to-one -one relationships. Like you're no longer going to be those hidden behind the rocks. And you know, you're coming into the public. People are starting to know about you. You're becoming, you're starting to crave public attention. The 11th house is large groups of people. 11th house rules social media, the marketplace where people come together to exchange goods and ideas, the stock markets. Uh, it's, uh, it's rules where you bring to the audience a project as well. And you wait for the, you know, it's your fans as well. Again, your clients, the wider audience, the seventh house is like the one-to-one -one exchanges with clients, the, the 11th house where Rahu is passing and Rahu always grows whatever it passes through. It always expands the desire for it. So we temporarily go after it, the hunger for it. Rahu is hungry. It's the mouth of a dragon is depicted in, you know, mythology as a dragon 
with mouth, with no body. So it's, it never fills the body and it's always hungry. So it's like you're hungry for public recognition. You're hungry and you become passionate for for rewards. The 11th house, the house of rewards and um, uh, being... Uh, Rahul breaks taboos. Rahul breaks the, or, the normal order to getting somewhere. And 11th house is so uh, the economic network. You know how people basically, how groups separate according to their financial status, like the country, the rich people in the country club, they get together. Another, you know, uh, other people form their gangs on the streets because they come from, you know, poor environment. Other people, everyone forms different cl cliques and social uh, economic uh, networks. And Rahu breaks the barriers between such. And Rahu is no nonsense, not sorry, it's a taboo breaker. So what can happen when Rahu transits the 11th house, and I've seen it a few times, is that you can break the barriers between your social circle and, you know, and infiltrate or go because Rahu usually takes you up, takes you from one social status to another social status or another group belonging. So for example, uh, you can become a member of the entrepreneurs or you can become of some group you know you can become a member some 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 privileged more privileged group more privileged network of some sort that you can gain access to this is what rahu tends to do actually rahu loves traveling the 11th house because rahu is hungry for recognition rahu is hungry to gain access the mythologies that rahu pretended to be god so he can drink the juice of immortality and become immortal become a god and trick them and drank the juice and became immortal. So wherever Rahu transits, we can trick almost like, we're not still ready, we haven't deserved it, but we can become members of those higher, more privileged social classes. So it breaks, so it allows social mobility. You know, this is the, Rahu in the 11th house is very much the early America's USA where there was, you can become from zero to a millionaire. I think still there's possibilities, but that's like the dream. The American dream is Rahu in the 11th house. You can be from any social background and you can reach the top, the privileged groups of, you know, society. And Rahu in the 11th house can catapult people when it transits, especially from the ascendant sign. Sometimes from the sun and the moon, I've seen it to a lesser degree, but yes, um, it can catapult you to a higher social standing, to a higher, to belong to more privileged group. I remember when Rahu was transiting the 11th house from my ascendant, I became friends with a celebrity person from Bulgaria. Uh, and I was like, I've never known anyone famous. And now we're very good friends. She's still in my life. And she's been introduced me to so many famous people from around the world because famous people around the world, they're interconnected and uh, clients and uh, one after another. It's kind of, <laughs> it's, and, and currently Rahu is already in my 11th from the moon. And I ended up doing horoscope for, you know, um, the prime minister of Italy, <laughs> the ex-prime minister of Italy, uh, the richest person in Bulgaria. People like I've just only heard on news and stuff that, somehow entered my social circle. I haven't met them personally, but they, you know, I got in contact, they contacted me and stuff. So you can suddenly get privileges into society or make some social connections that uh, I'm not saying you'll, you'll be hanging out with the Queen of England or such bullshit, but you know, whatever the highest next social status for you is, like you can make the right connections with Rahu is. And sometimes it can happen quite suddenly out of the blue and it can bring kind of, you know, access to those places that are usually off limits from a person, from a social status. So it's fantastic for building business networks, business um, uh, community with more privileged or uh, to build your fan base, your friends, new friends enter when Rahu is there. And these friends, usually there's some benefit from them because Rahu is a material planet. They usually, there's something very glamorous about them or something very exotic. Rahu has these qualities of exotic, glamorous, um, 
And the, such friends can be, for example, more rich or more famous or more, you know, or they can be foreigners. You can make foreign friends currently connect with such. Um, and usually the things that we acquire in life when Rahu transits a certain house, these are things that once we die, we consider that that was vanity. That was, it's basically, these were material things that we run after, but it gives us a lot of joy, a lot of kind of egotical, whatever Rahu transits in the material world when incarnated, it makes you fulfill certain, and the 11th house is goals and dreams and wishes. You can really become very uh, passionate. You can, the, the desire, you know, the the reptilian brain of desire becomes very focused and passionate for goal achievement. The 11th house is achieving long-term goals. So that's why, again, it's good for business. It's good for achieving and going after some uh, dream of yours. And again, you can even connect with the right people to help you suddenly introduce you to the right people and help you fulfill some dream or help you move forward some project. Again, it's nothing that helps your soul, your spiritual growth or whatever. Rahu is just to help satisfy or help create, keep us, enjoy this life with the material and external things. But that's what we are about in the Western civilization. So <laughs> we tend to like Rahu. Foreign friends and blah, blah. You can get bored with your normal friends as well. Um, Fulfilling some go and dream, receiving some accolades, receiving some recognition when Rahu transits the eleventh house, often happens more public uh, recognition or outreach as well, and it can happen suddenly again through some introduction, through some connection. Um, poo -poo 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 gainfulness that makes you more. You know, connections that you make or clients or whatever, it can make you more gainful. It can make you more popular. It can make you more, uh, you know, yeah, gainful, whatever. <laughs> Stock markets, you can take some risk there as well. But let's see where the South Node is. Because whatever the North Node is, the South Node is always opposite. It's an axis. They're not actual planets. The South Node is depicted like the dragon's tail. And they were cut in two. Uh, so this is the axis of yearning, you know, and the south node is in your fifth house, Leo. Okay, so you heard the, all the good stuff about Rahu. Now let's hear some of the things that are a bit more difficult about Ketu because that's the spiritual part. You know, the Rahu is what we get materially, where we fulfill some desires there. Rahu is where we do some sacrifice, so we lose something. And that's how we grow spiritually. <laughs> well, it's in the fifth house. So it might be having to make a sacrifice about a romantic relationship or having fun. Because you're chasing some goal, some social, economic, financial goal with Rahu in the 11th house. You know, and maybe you don't have so much time for romanticism, for fun, for enjoyment. The fifth house is... Enjoying life like a child, having fun, kicking back, like whatever your hobbies are. Is it reading a book? Is it partying? Is it dancing? Is it dating? Is it sex? You know, all the things that watching uh, Netflix, that's kind of not exactly fifth house. It's not this type of fun where you just kind of zone out. It's fifth type of fun is where your natural talent shine in. Maybe you get good at knitting. Maybe you're good at writing maybe you're good at uh, entertaining and telling stories you know there is some creative element to it there is some like a child when it's playing nowadays ch children a lot of children just watch youtube someone play computer games that's not fun fifth house that's 12th house zone out that's 12th house escaping reality fifth house is where you are kind of vibrant and flow and uh sparkle because you're doing something you love so much and there is active participation in it and it's like a game, it's like a play for you. So that's why often our hobbies are like that. Well, you kind of lose a little bit of that luster with South Node there. The, the whole 2021 is there and currently already in 2020 it is. You might feel like you're not having as fun or you're not romantically having this blast. Maybe you're neglecting a little bit the romantic side of a relationship, you know. 
uh, even though there's a lot of focus on relationship with Saturn and Jupiter there, but it's connected to something practical, achieving something together, if it's with your partner, uh, fixing something. But the really childlike, spontaneous connection and sex for pleasure might be a little bit lacking or might you might feel a little bit disconnected from you. Crap. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, Maybe it's because you have to focus on this Rahu and achieve those goals there. But also, it allows you to look at the... Uh, it gives you space there. And and I've noticed that when I had um, South Node transiting in the fifth house from my ascendant, that was nine years ago, I ended up a romantic relationship. Um, and... That can, that's another way it can end, a boyfriend, girlfriend situation, someone you're in love with, the steam can run out with South Node, or it can just, you have to make a sacrifice and it completely, you know, the South Node is to let go of something. And especially around the eclipse times, you know, the eclipses in your fifth house are happening in uh, May 26th or a month before, two, three months after. Uh, then there is another eclipse again in December the 4th in your 5th house. It's a new moon eclipse this time with the South Node. So again, you might have to let go something, sacrifice something, some changes there in your romantic love life. Um, uh, but it can bring a new one, the second eclipse, uh, at, at the December 4th one, because it's a new moon one. So, uh, But you let go of something, but it can bring a new one. Uh, and... Uh, there is also fifth house is children. Sometimes I've noticed that there is a bit of a disconnection from the child, uh, especially the firstborn. Uh, it can kind of zone out from reality or be start becoming a bit peculiar when so South Node is transiting your fifth house and uh, maybe disinterested in the material side of life. Or uh, I hope the worst thing is like it gets a bit weaker you know because south node is weakening influences disconnect you from the incarnation from the material attachment so it can weaken sometimes the health of a child through illnesses a little bit and then it disconnects it i hope it's not that you know these are more extreme connections i'm also having this so i i really knock on wood you know um it's not that anything happens with my firstborn but usually i've seen it that when I've spoken with people that they say, well, I don't have, I didn't, I, like I was not paying enough attention to my children because my passion was developing this project, Rahu in the 11th house and connecting and going to social connections and stuff. And the funny thing is with South Note in the fifth house, you kind of forget how to have fun, but at the same time you go to a lot of social do's because Rahu in the 11th house is social connections and stuff, but you're not really enjoying yourself as much. You're kind of chasing a goal through those connections and, you know, uh, social exchanges. Uh, and with the South in the South Node in the fifth house, sometimes I've seen that there is um, another thing is that a child might leave and might, you know, finish school, go to university sometimes, so we have to let go of them. Uh, it's about stripping our ego of certain attachments, the South Note. And this will be attachments to a, to a romantic partner sometimes or to a romantic aspect of the relationship. Or it can be to a child that it has to weaken a little bit the bond with the child so they can be more free. Uh, or a sacrifice that you have to make in the name of a child, you know. Or you might... Uh, lose for a little bit the desire to try and have children because you're chasing socio-economic goals of some sort, Rahu in the 11th house. For me, it's kind of weird because my ascendant is Aquarius, so it's always opposite. I'm my moon so sign, so it's always... I, I flip between both see so If you have something similar like me, you might just feel like, I might feel both from time to time, you know. All right. And... Uh, Yes, so important events in those 11 and 5th house can happen, especially around the eclipses. Anything that I talked about, the 5th and 11th house, you can expect around May 26th, a few weeks before, a few weeks after, around June the 10th. Uh, so some gains, for example, some uh, new social economic goals 
the June eclipse can bring some new friends, some social connections, some new project, you know, and then the uh, and then there is another eclipse actually that is in Taurus in your tenth house. That's a lunar eclipse at 27 degrees in Taurus, November the 19th. So 27, Leo 27 degrees, sun, moon, or rising. I would say from 25 to 30 degrees, sun, moon, or rising, Leo, the last five degrees, you'd feel more intensely the eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse, full moon eclipse in your 10th house. So the later Leos, but I would say all Leos. I don't want to give because it's a square. I would say all Leos. In the November, you can have some kind of a fulfillment of a career, clarity about career, seeing the results about some goal or career that you're working on in the 10th house. Some, it can be some big shift in career for some of you. It can be some big completion or ending there, seeing the results of and the rewards of a career project or change with a father figure or authority figure in their life that happens of some sort. So that's what the eclipses are bringing. And the late, la latest solar eclipse is on December the 4th in your 5th house with the south node, but it's new moon. So it can bring a new love interest for some of you, but it's kind of with south node. It's This love interest might be more spiritual in nature, might be past life connected to some, somehow. Um, you know, so there's this kind of a more spiritual side to it. And it can also bring a child, but again, there is a key to energy to this child, like a pregnancy, for example. It doesn't mean you're not going to get pregnant if you're trying to, you know, because Ketu doesn't stop the possibility of something happening. Ketu just disconnects you from the strong desire from it. But it can still happen. But if it happens, something of a Ketuvian nature, a child you have a karmic relationship with, or a child that is very spiritual, that is not interested in, you can attract a soul that is very spiritual, is not interested in material world. It's kind of a bit disconnected out there, you know. Anyway, enough of Ketu Rahu, the South Node. Let's go to Mercury retrogrades. They happen every year, three times a year, sometimes four. This year, you laugh again, guess where they're happening? Three Mercury retrogrades happening in uh, February, June, and October. They're happening in, again, in the yellow houses, which are the social houses. Everything just activates those social houses, Leos. You're not going to be left alone. <laughs> you have to deal with people and you have to create a lot of contacts and bridges and communications. The first Mercury retrograde is from January the 30th to February 20th. So most of February, it's happening in your seventh house. I think this will be the one you feel the most. Especially Leo's that are born from 11 degrees to 26 degrees in Leo. 11 to 26 degrees in Leo, which means your sun sign might be... If it's your sun sign in Leo, you're born from around the 30th, around the 19th of August, Mercury retrograde opposing your sun, moon, or ascendant. Now, it can always mean February, you can reconnect from people from the past. You can get in touch with friends you haven't, or, you know, acquaintances or whatever you haven't seen for a bit. Um, or you can restart some partnership, or you can pick up some old contract or agreement and restart it to some old collaboration to restart uh, something that you started before so you can complete it or you can have a reevaluation of current existing you know contracts agreements uh, collaborations or personal relationships so that can be a bit tense where you are re-examining do I is the this contract fair I want or you know uh, maybe we need to extend it before we sign the deal. We have to fix something. It might get delayed or we need to make something better, you know. And it requires three times more diplomatic approach than the seventh house when Mercury is retrograde. Seventh house, more negotiations, more willingness to collaborate and cooperate. Uh, I don't think it will involve harsh language or anything like that. But if you are diplomatic, you can really solve problems in any relationships during that time. Things from the past might be brought up, something you forgot to say, something that's been bugging you 
towards a client, towards a business partner, towards a friend or towards your marriage partner, a boyfriend, girlfriend. You can bring up things from the past that need to be elucidated, that need to be talked about so you can achieve more balance in a relationship. And if, if there is no, if it's, if it's really unbalanced, it's, it can be the breaking point when there is no desire for, from the other side to collaborate or when there is no desire or there is no report from the other side or from your side, you might be the one that screw you, I don't want that. So that can be a testing time for relationships, which are actually not too balanced anyway. Um, and the good balanced relationship that just needs something to improve, to be seen from a different angle, to be maybe discussed a bit more. There will be some important conversations. And by the time Mercury starts moving direct from the 20th of February, you'd have more stable contract, more stable, more fair relationship, more balanced, I would say, uh, with more communication. But the ones that are not, usually it's some crisis that happens there. And if you're working on some project with another partner or collaborator usually the retrograde period can this project might needs to be redone a few times so you're putting really the really the extra work it's when you are um when you're really giving it your all your skills your abilities there which is mercury and then when it might be delayed and then when mercury turns direct from the 20th of february you can start seeing the results and they usually be, might be three times better so business-wise it can be despite being a bit more challenging and more delayed when it's retrograde, you get a lot of things done. And when it turns direct, you see way more sales usually, improved strategy. During the retrograde, you might have changed your marketing strategy there, how to approach clients, how to sell, or your strategy in your marriage, how to communicate with your partner, what your roles are. You might have negotiated the rules of relationships and it can be way better after that. And if, if there was resistance from some side, you know, it breaks up. Okay, and then Mercury goes retrograde again, this time in your 11th house, where the North Node Rahu is what we talked about, from May the 29th, so from the end of May till June 22nd. It's actually quite helpful for you because it's making sex styles to your sign. So most of June. Mercury is retrograde day in your 11th house, a friend, you can reconnect with people from the past, with, uh, uh, again, it's about, so people from the past that we reconnect with, uh, some friendships that we've left behind, they can come back, maybe friends we haven't seen for a while, usually it's something good, because it's a sextile, it's a friend of, it's the house of the older sibling as well, you can, maybe you haven't seen your siblings or older siblings of sibling like friends for a while and you reconnect with them or you might be working on some project with an older sibling or friends that has to be redone a few times but use extra communication skills or any kind of skills with or it's your long-term goals and it's your socio-economic goals mercury retrograde day means that you might be revising putting final touches fixing something using three times more mental power and intellectual power and skills in some socio-economical business project that Again, you see, my God, this year is for business, it's for marketing. This year for you is to um, keep testing different marketing strategy, bringing them back and pulling them back. And you'll be with so much better testing different people that you work with, collaborating, trying different collaborations with, trying different connections, building bridges, and then seeing who is worth staying and who is not. It's You cannot be a universe onto yourself this year. You have to connect with others so much. And in some extreme cases, Mercury retrograde in the 11th house usually will be quite good for business, for gains, to revising your gains plans, for revising your, uh, maybe coming back to old projects that you bring back or you spurse up and bring them to the audience as well and reintroduce them, for example. Or on a personal level, sometimes it can create some crisis with friendship, you know, it's like, something more difficult happening in the life of a friend or some miscommunication or the need for clarifying conversations so you can, you know, things brought from the past to be discussed. But it might be something very nice, you connecting with a friend from the past and just thinking about the past and talking about that sometimes is that. Uh, or reviving, reviving and uh, an old project that you've left behind and you're picking it up after a few months or years or whatever. Um, 
and bringing new life into it. This is Mercury retrograde. Uh, or also doing some work, doing some project, long-term project that you're managing those the details of that long-term project and maybe revising them. Maybe it's a bit stressful. Maybe if you have any um, meetings or events that you have to go to or parties or social events, they might be a bit mixed up. They might be like uh, a bit of a crisis situation there. You might need to rebook and re you know, like shift something in the last moment or some unexpected surprise has happened there as well. But all in all, it should be quite good and the final result can be three times more lasting in such matters. And the last time Mercury goes retrograde is in your third house, another social house of other people. And this is happening most of October, from September 27th to October 18th. It might be reconnecting with younger siblings, with friends from the past, mates, workmates, teammates, schoolmates, with neighbors you haven't seen for a while, with relatives you haven't seen for a while. Bringing up old issues with such people as well that have to be discussed. Might be some crisis situation with some such people, things that maybe your neighbor is pissing you off and you're like you've been meaning to tell them to stop you know uh whatever throwing over the fence uh, the dog poo into your yard or whatever and now you confront them and say listen this has been bothering me for a bit this is mercury retrograde in the third house you bring up the things to be discussed with those in your everyday environment um and and again it's also all those houses seven third 11th where mercury goes retrograde they're about social networking online connections business and you can be doing some cleanups there some reorganizations of the strategy some some of you might be closing in uh, uh, social media accounts in one place opening in other you know to kind of transferring one you know bunch of clients to another file and such kind of stuff cleaning up or some of you might be like okay i'm off this social network you reconsider mercury retrograde in the third and the 11th you reconsider your social networks i remember when i had mercury retrograde in my third house it's about social associates as well people that you work in a small team with uh and managers and stuff that's when i uh team team teammates workmates um uh, that's when I found out something about a workmate of mine that information was given to me what she's been doing in the past. So Mercury retrograde, you find out something that's been happening before and I was quite shocked and we had a crisis, we fought we, and we split up the, uh, let's say, the this association, third house is associate as well, people you work with. So there can be some crisis situations with workmates and such stuff or friends when it's in the 11th house in June the 3rd house when it's in <coughs> in October um, but uh, usually it's honestly when it's uh, these people you don't need them any, anymore you revise them and you just leave more quality people or it may mean that you're working with a small team a group environment of a few people that you're working on some project administrative or commercial or whatever in a small group environment or you're doing some workshop or you're taking some course and using a lot of your mercury retrograde is to use three times more pre conscious presence when it comes to skills with when it comes to learning with information with marketing with advertising with traveling with uh, uh, devices yes be careful about your devices when mercury goes retrograde in the third house with your car with you might have to change plans with the routes you take or trips that you have in october or there might be some surprises there you might have to be ready with a alternative plans you know if you're going on a trip or the where you're driving your car you might have to fix something on your car or about fix something on your phone device of uh passwords be careful with those things mercury retrograde in the third house um your accounts social accounts uh, some miscommunication that has to be fixed. So you might be editing some written or spoken project or bringing back to life to revive some written or spoken or training projects or some old skills of yours. So you might be required to use three times more communication skills or three times more skills of any sort to work on something. Might be project, might be business, 
and that activates your mind a lot to really dig deep, fix something a few times. Uh, and by the end, by, by the time Mercury returns direct from October 18th onward, you can have a very better project again, better written final result, better website if you are revising a website and fixing something there, better uh, project with a small team environment, better report, better uh, you might have brushed up on some old skills that you revived and you improved even during that time. Um, and yeah, better final commercial project as well, all of that. Uh, better working car. <laughs> all right. But you see how it is, there is a lot of focus on those yellow houses, communication, uh, talking with others, exchanging information with others, uh, br brainstorming with others. Be open to what others can give to you this year, guys. They're your ticket. They're your, uh, you know, I know you're the king, but the king needs his trusted people. The king needs his uh, inspiration as well because it becomes too narrow-minded otherwise. So it will come now from others, those new ideas and so on. And yes, you'll be revising relationship, but others, new ones will be coming as well. So, and business and all such things, uh, you know, so interesting and very quickly Venus will be in Leo so let's start with Mars Mars will be in Leo from June the 12th to July 29th that's when you're gonna feel quite so basically half of June and all of July you're gonna feel quite energized um, because of Mars passing your sign you can be more ambitious you can go after things with more drive you can be more quarrelsome in those times as well not all the time but say the early Leos in June, they'll feel more quarrelsome. The later Leos in July, when Mars passes those degrees. And, but the, also, this can be the time you really take some initiative that you haven't had the courage to do before. Uh, for some of you, you might even start working out or some physical exercise or some more serious routine that puts your body in shape. Uh, for others that are more prone to high blood pressure, be a bit more careful around June, July when Mars is in your sign because this tends to raise people that are naturally, you know, that hypertonic or whatever, problems with the heart and the back. Be careful because Leo rules the back as well and the heart. It, it, it tends to be Mars passing there. There tends to be more issues with that. But um, for, for more healthy Leos, uh, you know, that's when you just kind of get angry and you get into action and you get more kind of you know only anger activates action <laughs> depression or sadness or feeling wonderful doesn't even doesn't often initiate action and not only that but mars will make in at around june 28th at the end of june will make squares to saturn in your seventh house and uranus in your tenth house especially those uh, Leo's born on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of August. 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of August. They have to be more cautious towards the end of June, around 28th, maybe a few days before, a few days after those Leo's that are, uh, you know, around 7, what, what degrees, sorry, second, around 10 to 12 degrees in Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, 10, 11, 12, even 13 degrees, you know, um, born 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th of August, they have to be a bit more cautious the end of June because of Mars, Saturn and Uranus are making a difficult configuration. Let me explain. Let me show it to you. All Leos have to be a little bit more careful towards the end of June, but especially those that are in the heart of the spider's net, so to speak, are those degrees I gave you. Saturn, opposed Mars and Uranus. Your life can turn around. This is the wheel of when the wheel of fortune spins, when T square is formed between quite active planets, Mars, Uranus, Saturn, they're quite cruel planets, they're called. And I'm not saying something cruel will happen for you, but something will spin the wheel, some, something big. You can do a big thing, like if it's your son in those degrees, Leo, big change in your career. It might be a bit stressful why it's happening, though. It's not the easiest, uh, but it can have great results again. Again, it depends how you handle those degrees or big stress or big change with the male figure 
or with your goals of some sort that's a bit challenging that you have to overcome it if it's your moon emotionally with your emotional connections with home with family with the mother figure and you have to see what house the moon is of course for me it's you know in the seventh so it, for me it might directly correlate with relationships for example if it's your ascendant those degrees 10 11 12 around you know the the square mars uranus and saturn affects relationships definitely and career that can feel you know you have to be more careful around that time a big swing and shift can happen and finally i want to speak about the outer planets neptune and Uran uh, neptune and pluto do not affect you they do not make any aspect to leo but uranus uranus is shaking up leo <laughs> and it will be for for the next four years and i love uranus even the difficult aspects i don't know <laughs> uranus is fun it brings new things and i know Air leo is a fixed sign so they're kind of a bit slow on the new things but uranus definitely makes things interesting and uranus will affect this year just a few number of people those who are born uh as i said earlier uranus from around six degrees till 15 degrees so uranus will be passing from 15 from six to 15 degrees in leo in 2021 um in your 10th house that means if you're Leo Sun, you're born from July 29th approximately, maybe a day plus or minus till August the 18th. Till August the 18th. Uh, so, sorry, August the 8th. July 29th till August the 8th. So 6 to 15 degrees, Leo. You are rock and rolling this year with Uranus and Saturn. You're getting also the Saturn square. Oh, you're the ones that, for you, the year will be more difficult. Six till 15 14 degrees in leo like i told you already about saturn what saturn can do when it's opposing it puts more responsibilities some pressure to you from our external outside sources some obstacles you have to overcome some resistance from others you know some others might be like no this might not happen you have to do this or you have to jump those hoops or they have too many demands you know and you're resisting i don't want to do their thing so you have to find a compromise there testing of relationships a little bit but again these can be the people that really push you into some success like when i had saturn opposing my son uh years ago that's when my partner forced me to start astrology to start my business i did not want to every morning he would give me a list of things i have to do go start doing it and i was not used to discipline at all i was like i wanted i was like oh love of attraction i'll sit here and imagine all day and i was just playing my visualization tapes all day long on my laptop and i'm like it's gonna happen and he said no okay you, you've done that now you're gonna start doing step by step the practical steps and that's saturn opposition sun moon or ascendant in those degrees that are being affected five six to fifteen this is how you can feel you know someone like that who you feel like oh kids you know you're kind of really resisting them because saturn is in very good dignity they're pushing you towards something better for you and and when i had saturn opposing my son saturn was also in great dignity in libra and saturn in aquarius is in great dignity so even if you have someone who is on your ass and being demanding on you or just pushing you to making you do hard things believe me one day you'll be very grateful to this person whether it's a boss whether it's a partner whatever or whether it's a demanding client you'll be one day very grateful because they're taking you to the next step with more commitment to be more disciplined to to stepwise achieve your goals in a practical way but you're also receiving those that are having the saturn influence they're also having the uranus influence wow crazy so what happens uranus is brand new energy and uranus is coming from your 10th house of career and so it's it can it can for some of you it can mean suddenly changing your career like really or really renewing it in such a way that you can't recognize it your role there uh for example everything gets uh automated in your career or everything gets you know software or updated somehow or uh, because it's outdated you need to really upgrade everything to be you know uranian uranians to keep in touch with the latest trends 
So that can be one thing you do for your business or your career. Some of you might just start a totally new branch of career. Uranus is so new. Like I have a friend who is Leo rising. And when Uranus is transiting now her 10 house and she was a supermodel, one of the most famous supermodels uh, in Europe. And now she's becoming, she, she's seriously thinking and becoming an astrologer on television. And I was like, wow, you blew them away, you know, <laughs> Uranus, you know, something unusual, something you never thought even you'd do. Or if you even want to be an astrologer, you're in a square, your sun, moon or ascendant, seriously, that, that can be a good time for it because it uh, corresponds to do something alternative and different or freelancer of any sort. When you're in a transit, especially from the 10th house, you know, it's when it wants to give you more freedom in your career to come and go as you want, not to be tied up by some kind of rules all the time, you see, but Saturn wants to tie it to rules. Maybe the rules and demands of your clients, you know, the, of the marketplace, you have to follow those. But at the same time, you have to innovate as well with Uranus, your, especially your image. You have to be willing to be, for it to be a bit zany and crazy, you can ruffle a few feathers. It can not jibe well with some of your clients or some of your people in your circle and environment and partners and relationships. But Uranus usually trumps Saturn because it's a further out planet. So it has more powerful influence. But you have to keep the demands of both planets. They're both active for you. You have to do things, especially in partnerships and in business Saturn in the stepwise legal way, you know, in a, to keep up with the demands, the bureaucratic or whatever, and the quality. Um, while well, Uranus wants you to innovate as well. So you have to co combine, combine both. And that's why it's hard, because it's a hard aspect between Uranus and Saturn. Brand new, old. And based on experience and proven and tested, total experimentation and something new. You can't do just one or the other. You have to do both somehow. In some areas, a little bit of this, especially in your career. But, you know, it's... Uh, and that can put a bit of a strain in your relationships with clients or personal partners as well. But I think Uranus will really turn your life around if you're 60 or 15 degrees Leo Sun, especially with Korea. Some, some important Uranian people can enter your life, unexpected, unusual, that bring new goals for you that are very unusual. Uh, you can really change your attitude towards government and institutions and your relationship to them. Uranus can free you from certain relationships and responsibilities, uh, not to be so dependent on the traditional government institutions or traditional boss figures relationships. You can break up a relationship with both, fi both figures, or it's usually a pull to become your own boss again. <laughs> Why are, are we hearing this theme again? To be more independent. Uh, and with your ascendant, it can stress if your ascendant is 60 or 15 degrees, it can definitely now it's crunch time to decide about some relationship. It can bring suddenly new relationship, they can start and end fast, or it can end the relationship that it's just not the good one or really change a relationship for you. For example, uh, if a relationship has, has been in a stasis, you know, that's, it's not going to be the case now. You have to make the decision. The decision will be made for you, those degrees that we're talking about. Uh, and Uranus, again, there, if it's your ascendant, changes possibly your career because of your social status, changes because of your goals and achievements change. Uh, but you're revolutionizing your career. You're revolutionizing your public image. Uh, very different. And with the moon, it can be emotional relationships on and off as well. It can be some kind of a testing of a relationship you have to go through or some restructuring of a relationship with Saturn uh, opposition and you're in a square or sometimes I've seen like a partner has to travel, come and go. Even with the ascendant, the moon, those degrees, you know. Um, and... Wow, I'm going to have Uranus and Saturn on my moon in 2022. <laughs> Three. Awesome. So what I'm talking to you, I'm saying it to myself as well. And um, if you want to 
keep the status quo in relationship, especially if you're ascendant or moon in those degrees, if you really like your marriage or whatever, uh, when those things happen, you have to change something. Maybe change where you live. Maybe your partner has to change their career, change your lifestyle, change. Do things you've never done that are very different with your partner while keeping propriety. Because Saturn in the seventh house demands that boundaries are not crossed morally. But Uranus says squaring the ascendant or the moon in those degrees says, but you gotta do something else. Or it's not gonna work. So you gotta you gotta keep your commitments there, Saturn, and still be responsible and moral boundaries, but you gotta do also something a bit crazy that you've never done. I don't know, go have sex in nature or go move to a different country or start a business together, you know. The dynamics of relationships have to change a lot. Uh, and with the moon also, it can be the mother that is a bit stressed during that life period or you're changing. You, the best way to manifest is like, you change place of living or you change the circumstances of your family or maybe they're demanding responsibilities with parenthood or nurturing and caring or home and kind of that are thrown off occasionally into craziness because of the Uranus of surprises of routines and stuff and the hormones if you're a woman and your moon is in those degrees of Leo watch out your hormones and the sun as well for men your health just a little bit because because of the stressful aspect even if external events can play out really good eventually, uh, just the stress on your back, on Leo, anything Leo, back, uh, heart, blood pressure, but just moon rules naturally hormones. Uh, just might be a great time to change your routines and incorporate new routines that will last long again. Um, so you can even feel like a motivation by working with another person and so on so thank you so much wow leo you're one of the interesting signs <laughs> very interesting things are happening not for all of you <laughs> but uh, big things all, everything i spoke about the seventh house the eleven the third these are the big areas in your life this year thank you so much and i will see you next whatever next week <laughs> i love you leo